morning, you guys. Super excited as we get a new week started. Uh, live on Triple M. Welcome to the call. More people will be joining in. And if you're watching on the recording, welcome as well. My name is Aubrey. We're going to have Roxy here in a second. And we're excited as we get this week started uh, with a great video. This week, we're going to be listening to Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is a world-renowned speaker. Uh, Roxy and I have actually been to one of his seminars kind of called Unleash the Power Within. This thing was four days, 50 hours. This thing was ridiculous. 10,000 10, people in one room. I'm going to tell you, the first day we got there, we got there like 11.30, got into the building at about 1.30 because the lines were crazy, didn't get out of there till like 1.30 a.m., 2 a.m. after we walked on hot coals, burning coals. It was crazy. And, uh, but also one of the most amazing experiences of my life, you know, there were days where I was like, you know, I'm on Herbalife, like I'm, a lot of you guys are, and we have a lot of energy. But there was days now I was like, how am I going to get through this day? Like straight up, Tony doesn't even take breaks. He would be up there for 10 hours, 11 hours straight. He's a monster. But he, knew, he knows how the human is created and operates. Every 20 or 30 minutes, he would amp up the energy like a concert, re, like re-explode us and then bring us back into absorbing information. Like so many things from that event, Tony changed my life just through videos alone. That event was next level. That's the guy who's about to be sharing with you guys his top 10 rules for success. So you wanna take notes, I got my notes out. And if you're on the call, we're gonna take some insights. Uh, either, hopefully you can share live, if not, put it in the chat thread. And super excited to get started as we listen to Tony Robbins, top 10 rules for success. Uh, without further ado, here he is. Maybe, hopefully it'll load. I just had it ready. A little bit of technical difficulties. Now, hold up, let me reset it. It was loaded. Dang, they messed me up. Ah, uh, here we go. Today is the day. Oh, look, creepy gloves for my feet. Yeah, when I was a kid, there was a handle. Sorry about the face. Guys. This is nice. Yeah, this and does it come like California King? Up. Getting a roid rage. Hemorrhoid. These are the worst, right? I'm gonna buy them. Boom, I'll take them. Impulse buy. <laughs> oh. Presenting the American Express Blue Cash Everyday Card with cash back on purchases. It's all happening. And no annual fee. There we go. Cash back on purchases, backed by the service and security of American Express. Adds value. They want. They want you to supply them more information. Self-help author. He became well known from his infomercials and self-help books. In 2013, Forbes estimated his net worth to be 480 million dollars. He's Tony Robbins, and here are his top 10 rules for success. Ultimately, if you're going to have lasting change in anything, you're really talking about just raising your standards. I mean, I always tell people, if you want to know how to change your life, I give it to you in three words, boring as it sounds, raise your standards. And what does that mean? Corny as it sounds. Raise your standards. Oh, thank you for the breakthrough thought, Tony. I'm glad I wasted my time watching this little email with you. But think about it. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Maybe it would help you is to think about it this way. I try to explain standards to people with a different set of words. Think of it as everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Like, think about it. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on? I, I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should make more calls, I should respond more rapidly to my email, whatever, you know? I should get into the office earlier, I should be, you know, more confident, whatever your should list is. People love to have their should list make, be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions, if it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, eh, it's a little disappointing, but you kind of know it's not gonna happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm gonna find the way, or I'm gonna make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard and they make it a must, they find the way. Think about it in your own life. Haven't you had some area of your life where you raise your standard and your life has never been the same? Maybe at one time in your life you smoked cigarettes or you did something and you did it for years and you kept trying to change it, trying to change it and kept telling yourself I should. And then one day something happened. 
something just clicked you over, something took you over that kind of tipping point. And inside yourself, you said, no more. And it was a very, very different experience, wasn't it? Something inside of you shifted, and what was a should became a must, and you've never gone back. Is there an area like that in your life you can think of? Again, did you ever smoke cigarettes? Did you ever eat a certain way, drink a certain form of alcohol, and then finally say no more, and you just don't go back? And notice this, it doesn't really take any willpower anymore. Because somewhere when we make this click, when we make something a must, we attach ourselves to it. It becomes part of our identity. And one thing I've learned in the last, gosh, 33 years of working with people from now over 100 countries, 4 million people, is human beings absolutely follow through on who they believe they are. If you say, said to me, well, I'm really gonna work hard to stop smoking, but you know, I've been a smoker my whole life, and I'm, you know, I am a smoker. I know your days are numbered. You're gonna be back smoking cigarettes again because we all act consistent with who we believe we are. I tell people the strongest force in the whole human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. If you define yourself as somebody who is really conservative, you're not gonna be crazy and act nuts unless you're really drunk or something, and then you can say it's the alcohol, when it's really just you finally getting permission to be yourself, the alcohol is your excuse. If you're a really crazy person, you act crazy, outrageous, playful. You don't act conservative because that's not who you are. Very often people say, well, I can't do that, I'm not that kind of person, and I always say to people, really, when did you define yourself? I mean, really, how many years ago did you come up with what you could and couldn't do in your life? How many years ago? Most people, if they really look at how they're living their life today, it's based on a set of standards, a set of beliefs that they made choices about 10, 20, 30, or more years ago. I mean, very often we made decisions in our youth, or very young, about what to believe, about what we were capable of, about who we are as a person, and that becomes the glass ceiling, if you will, that controls us. There's a, a corny metaphor, but it's true. I remember one time I was with my family at the circus and there was a person there and they had this big giant elephant. And you look at this elephant and they take this little rope, put it around the elephant's neck and they drive this stake into the ground. And I mean, you look at this and you know that elephant could rip down the entire tent with almost no effort. And yet the elephant doesn't struggle, doesn't try. Why? Because the elephant's conditioned. And they take that elephant, condition the elephant when it's a baby elephant. That's how they train them. When it's a little baby elephant and it doesn't have the power yet, they put a big rope around it and they drive this huge stake in the ground and the elephant fights and fights and fights. And one day, finally, that elephant decides, I'm not capable of pulling this out. And once that becomes the definition of an identity of anyone, an elephant in this case, they don't even try anymore. It's just who I am, that's how it is, that's just the way it is in my life. I'd like to ask you to Take a look at any place you've got a limitation and ask yourself, when did I decide to accept that limitation? And you may not even see it as a limitation. You might see it as just, that's who I am. But so often in our lives, we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people will like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. Joy comes when you're spontaneous. It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not being yourself. And most of us have no clue who we are. And so a big part of my work, if you've ever been to an event, you know, is to get people to do things spontaneously without thinking, because that's when the real you shows up. That's when the energy comes alive. And when you do that, when you start to connect your true nature, suddenly there's energy available for you to set a higher standard for what you want in your life. That's what this is really all about. And when I talk about standards, when I talk about, you know, shoulds versus musts, think about your own life. I know there have been areas in your life where some point in time you just shifted and you raised the standard and your life changed. Because whatever people have their identity attached to, they live. We live who we believe we are. That's just how it works. It's just kind of like, I'll give you an example. Look at your physical body. Your physical body today is an absolute reflection of only one thing. Not your goals, not your desires, but your standards the identity you have for yourself. If your standard is you're an athlete, then there's a certain amount of strength, a muscle tone, and energy that's available in your body on a regular basis because that's who you are. And so you do whatever's necessary to maintain that identity. Again, the strongest force in the human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. Because if you don't know who you are, you wouldn't know how to act. 
Once you lock in on that identity, your brain finds a way to keep you there. If you say, uh, you know, man, I've, I'm overweight, I've always been overweight, I'm big boned, and that's the story you've got, then you're going to always find a way to get back there. That's your settling point. That's your identity. That's where things lock in. If you see somebody who's in really great shape, you ask them, do you work out? You know the answer. Yes, how often? And they'll tell you three times, four times, five times a week, whatever. In a seminar, I'll ask people, who here works out at least five days a week? And I'm stand up. And you look around that room, and you know that they work out five times a week because you can see their body. You don't just get a result without some kind of action, without some form of ritual. Ritual meaning actions you do consistently. Now, do you think those people that are out there working out five days a week, do they have more time than you do? Or I have, or anybody else? Of course not. Is their life less busy? Of course not. It's just a must for them. They must work out that way, and they've made that turn, and their life changed. So I'm not saying you have to work out five days a week. I'm just saying whatever you really want, wants don't get met consistently. Standards do. Whatever you identify, this is who I am. And so it's not so much about changing your identity as there's expanding it. You know, deciding that, you know, instead of your goal is to lose 10 pounds, which is not compelling, what if your vision was to get back to my fighting weight? You know, this, this year, this month, this next 90 days, I'm going to transform my body. I'm going to take on a new challenge. I'm going to find some technique or strategy. There's a million of them that can reframe myself where I want to feel younger, stronger, more vibrant than ever before. Here's my reasons, because I want the energy to really make my life work, because it's tough out there and I want to be stronger than I've ever been before. I want to go in front of the mirror and if I'm naked, not, you know, want to laugh. I want to look there and take a good look and go, yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of whatever I see there. Whatever it takes, something's going to make you laugh, smile, something's going to tease yourself, but something's going to move you to another level. If you identify yourself in a new way and you own that every day and that becomes the standard of how you live, you'll find the way to make that standard real. Money's the same way. Think about it. It doesn't matter what's happening, quote unquote, in the marketplace. People that make money find a way to make money no matter what, don't they? I mean, most people's standard is to pay their bills. So that's what most people find a way to do, even when economic times get tough. Most people, if that's their absolute standard, they find a way. Some people's standard is pay their bills most of the time. And so most of the time they do. Some people's standard is not just to pay their bills, but to take care of their family and maybe even some of their friends. And they find a way. In fact, you know, some people may be in a family where they don't have enough money. They barely have money to pay their bills. They work their guts out. And then somebody, their mother, their father, somebody else, their sister gets ill and there's not enough money to take care of it. Nobody else has money in the family. They don't either, but they find a way to get that money to take care of their mother or father, don't they? And pay their bills. They never could do it before. Why? The situation made them raise their own standard. And not everybody does that. Somebody else in the family might have money and still not take care of their mother. It all comes down to the inner game, my friends. Changing your life is a change in the inner game. The outside world you can't control, but you have absolute control over this one if you learn the dynamics of what shapes you. And identity is one of those simple, clear, fundamental basics that if you start, start to shift it, everything else will shift in your life as well. Some people, by the way, have to have more than enough money to do what they want, when they want, where they want, with whomever they want, contribute the way they want. And if that's their must, they find a way. I know that sounds overly simplistic, but it's true. You know, somebody once said, you can take all the money in the world out of the hands of everybody, out of all the wealthy people in the world who are really successful, give it to other people. It wouldn't take too long. Those people would have it back in their hands. It's not because they're manipulative. It's because they have a standard. Some are manipulative. Don't get me wrong. But they've got a standard of what they're going to find a way to make happen. I'm just simply saying to you, take those three magic words and live them. Raise your standard. Michael Gerber, the guy that wrote the E-Myth, you know, talks about why so many businesses, young businesses fail. And one of the things he says is most people are not really entrepreneurs, but they think that's what they should be. They think that's the sexy thing, that's the most attractive thing, that's the best answer. And what I say to you is, you've got to separate the vehicle from the outcome. What is it that's going to truly fulfill you? What is it that's going to give you that extraordinary life? What's going to make things magnificent on your terms, not somebody else's terms, not your father, your mother, your background? What is that really? Separate the vehicle, because there's many ways to get to that vehicle. But I'm saying, sometimes you've got to reevaluate what's going to really make you fulfilled. What is your gift? Are you an artist? Are you the talent that can produce something no one else produces as a skill or a product or a service or some impact? Are you incredibly good at management? You really know how to manage or lead people? 
Are you an extraordinary entrepreneur that has, can take that gigantic gut load of risk and can create the vision and attract the talent that you need and the managers and leaders? You may have all three abilities, but which one really fulfills you the most is going to be the critical question. Because we tend to want to do them all, especially in a room like this, because you're all overachievers, right? Me too. And you say, well, I can do all these. Yes, you can, but what will it do to your quality of life? See, again, the secret's going to be this. What is an extraordinary life on your terms today? Things, getting things is not going to make you happy. That's good news in a tough economy. It's a good reminder. You know, it doesn't matter what you get. It doesn't matter whether it be money or opportunity. All those things might excite you for the moment. You know, even a relationship, as magnificent it may be, might be exciting for a while. But if you don't keep growing, that relationship isn't going to stay exciting. So the secret to real happiness is progress. Progress equals happiness. And if we can make progress on a regular basis, we feel alive. And that's why at the beginning of the year, we get this thing like, okay, I can have this fresh start. I can really do what my soul desires. I can expand. I can grow. I can improve. I can change. Or maybe better than change, I could progress. See, think about that. Progress is an aliveness to it, doesn't it? You don't have to work at changing. People say all the time, now, well, I'm, I'm working on changing. Don't worry about it. You don't have to work on changing. Change is automatic. Your body's going to change whether you want it or not as the years go by. And no matter how hard you work, there's going to be some changes going on there. And the economy is going to change no matter what you want it to do. The weather is going to change. Relationships are going to change. Everything in life is always changing. We don't have to work on change. Change is automatic, but progress is not. So if you want to make real progress, then you really got to look at your life in a different way. You got to say, I got to take control of this process and not just hope it's going to work out like people do who make a resolution. Treat people at the end of the relationship like it's the beginning and there won't be an end. And that's not just your intimate relationship. What if your customers, what if you fell in love with your customers, with your clients more than your product, more than your company? If your entire life was about meeting their needs, if you would do what for your customers and clients, you would do what? If you love your customers and clients, you do anything, guess what? They're going to love you. But most people love their customers and clients as long as they buy from them, do what they want, respond to them. And when they don't, they go, that's the end. You want clients for life, not just customers? Fall in love with them. It's a different focus, isn't it? It's a different meaning. And that creates a different life because you make decisions differently from that place. What does it take to create world-class marketing? What is the unique selling proposition? What is what we call value-added marketing, VAM? Today, most people are sick and tired of advertising because where is it? Everywhere. In fact, I got a question for you. How many of you in this room do not even see banner ads anymore? Literally, it's there, but you don't perceive it. Like, there's, like your brain literally washes it out. Raise your hand if that's true. Keep your hands nice and high and look around the room right now and you'll see 98% of the people wash it out. So don't buy them unless you're going to create something really unique. It's a total waste of your money and your time in the world we're in today. Today, what creates marketing is when you don't just market, but you add value to people. You do something, you teach them, you give them an insight, you give something valuable that costs them nothing, and then they look to you as an expert. They look to you as a person that adds value. They want, they want you to supply them more information, more experience, more products, more services. If you let me this whole business about meeting your needs. All right, we're gonna stop there because we're actually probably gonna watch the second half next week because it's actually a longer video. That was fire. Man, I got a bunch of notes. Rox, you want to go first? What you got for us? What's up, you guys? Happy Monday. Um, so some of my takeaways. Man, where did I start? Um, I really love the very beginning when he was talking about how everyone in, life's, everyone in life gets their must and not their shoulds. You know, uh, looking back on this, I remember before uh, when I decided to, like, actually take my life somewhere else, it was no longer I should change my life, I should work out, I should, I should, I should. It was more of, like, that's it. I'm tired of being where I'm at, and if I continue to do what I've been doing, then I'm continuously going to get the same results. So all of the things that I wanted, like, it had to become a must. You know, like waking up early, going to the gym. For me, my journey really started when I was, I, I wanted to get into the best shape of my life. And it was no longer of like, 
I should go to the gym, but if you see my pictures, I've completely transformed like my body, but through me transforming my body, it has transitioned into so many areas of my life, you know, so I could really relate to that, that whenever you want something and you no longer say, I should go to the STS, I should go to the events, I should, like as far as an Herbalife member, and it becomes a must for you, then you start to reap the kind of rewards that you want. And uh, so I thought that was really powerful. And then um, I also loved uh, how he talked about that we all act consistent with who we believe that we are. And it's so, so true. If in the deepest recesses of your subconscious, you believe that you're not deserving, that you're always going to be broke, that you're going to be a certain type of person, like no matter what you do, you know, and if you're not applying action to change that, then you're continuously going to be stuck in the same position where you've been. Why? Because you don't believe that that's who you are. You know, um, so I really, really love that because, for instance, for us inside of Herbalife, it's just like we want to reach certain positions. So it's just like, well, who do we get to become in order to be able to achieve those kinds of positions, to be able to be there? Like, who must we become? And once you get clear on that, then you start acting out of that space like you are that person. Because if you believe it, then you'll begin to attract it into your life. So I thought that was really uh, powerful. And then, um, let me see, one more. Last one. I love when he said, you don't get a result without consistent action. And action is everything. Consistency is everything. No matter what you want to achieve in your life, like every single day, if you say, hey, I want to become financially free, and you do it maybe for only two weeks, three weeks, and then you stop, like how are you ever going to be consistently like uh, financially free? If you want a certain type of body, you know, if you want to grow your, your biceps, you don't just go into the gym and say, hey, I'm only going to do one rep and it's going to grow. Like, no, it takes consistent action over and over in order for us to be able to produce the kind of results that we want to get in our life. You know, and a lot of the times I know for me in the past, I used to say, oh, maybe they're just lucky. Like, no, like people that, that achieve certain things in their life, they've been beating on their craft and working on their craft day in and day out and day in and day out. So those are some of my biggest takeaways. Awesome. Great stuff. Love it. Uh, this is a great video. We're going to do part two next week uh, on building on top of Roxy's takeaways. I really love the identity one. I really do believe that's so powerful. You know, they said we live who we believe we are. And you, if you notice, if you ever drink an alcohol or had a friend or family member that's drinking alcohol and then maybe they act differently and they're like, well, the alcohol did it. And you said, no, the alcohol gave you an excuse to be who you really are. I experienced this. I used to be really shy. Uh, I didn't talk much. And then in high school, I got introduced to alcohol one time. And then I started, like, it, it, I never felt that. I was late to alcohol. I didn't try to, like, I was 16, 17. I guess kids are trying really early these days. We're going to change that. But I never acted like that because I was so reserved. And it was because, really, I didn't have any confidence. I was really a late bloomer. And then later in college, I had stopped for a long time because I had some bad experiences. You know, hangovers don't feel good, and I didn't like that feeling. In college late, I got tired of being the DD from always not drinking. So I said, I'm going to drink tonight just so I don't have to drive everybody. I ended up having a good time because I was able to come out of my shell more. It gave me an excuse, but really what it gave me was an excuse to be me where I wasn't confident yet enough in myself to be me. I wasn't confident enough to act the way I normally was. I had to really know people first to be able to act who I really was because I didn't know if people would accept me because I wasn't accepting of myself and I wasn't accepting of who I really was. So I needed all these external things as a crutch to accept and show myself. Now I don't drink hard alcohol. I don't drink alcohol at all. It's been uh, over three years when I started Herbalife. So I really love that because what are you? Who are you? He said, who are you really? Who are you really? Like, are you different people around different people? That means that's not you. You know, when everybody's gone and everything's quiet, who are you really? And how connected and intentional and having integrity with who you are really? Because who you are really depend, uh, you know, impacts all of your actions, impacts who you act as, and that creates the results of your life. 
but you also get to build who you are really through building yourself. So I love that one. Uh, one of the things he touched on in there when he was talking about successful people, and I really love this, he said, do you think successful people have more time than you? He said, no, they don't. They just have different must versus shoulds. You know, I look at successful people in Herbalife, and I'm like, man, they don't have more time than us. You know, they just have different must versus shoulds. They have, you know, for them, it's a must to have guests at every event. For them, it's a must to have amazing results all the time. For them, it's a must to continue working on themselves. For them, it's a must to continue having new clients. For them, it's a must to qualify for everything. For them, it's a must to be up on stage sharing their story, contributing. There's different must versus shoulds. And that's the only difference between those successful and those not. So I really love that because it's not time. It's not something special that was given to a certain few. It's different decisions. I really love that. Said you can change and expand your identity. You know, changing your outer life, you can't control. Changing your life is a change of your inner game. Because you have no control over what goes on outside, but your inside creates your outside. So it's like, if you wanted to change the fruit on a tree, you wouldn't go to the apple and be like, man, what's up with this apple? I need this orange. And try to put an orange on the tree. No, you would go to the seeds and you would plant different seeds. So if you didn't want different actions and results, your results are the fruit. Your action is the tree. Your belief is the seed. So if you want different results, you don't change the tree. You don't change the fruit. You change the seed, which is your beliefs. Beliefs in who you are. Beliefs in what your must or shoulds are. I really like that. Uh, and then I'll, I'll give you guys one more. Love your customers. You know, before Herbalife, I never wanted to be a salesperson. I really didn't like that. I was like, I don't want to sell people. I don't like to sell and all this stuff. And then I heard one personal development when they were talking about everybody is a salesperson. You're selling your, your, you know, your significant other in your relationship. You're selling your job if you're an employee to keep you on the payroll. You're selling your school to get in and get good grades. You're selling your friends to want to be friends with you. Like everybody sells and there's just some that are good, better at it than others because some people work on their skills as a salesman more than others. So as a salesperson of the healthy active lifestyle, which I believe in urban life we are, how much value are you adding to your clients as a salesperson? Meaning loving them after the value of what they purchased from you. You know, those people that maybe have fallen off, what kind of events and value added structures are you creating for those that you're trying to help with these products for all of our Herbalife members? I love that. Things like Triple M. Herbalife didn't hit us up and tell us to do Triple M. They weren't like, yo, Aubrey and Roxy, we need y'all to do Triple M. No, this is something we wanted to offer to everybody because it's something we enjoy, adding value. So those are some of my takeaways. Let's get a few from the call-in line. If you're excited, let me see your hands up, or I'll just call on you. All right, well, James Melgoza raised his hand, but we're going to have him. There we go. Okay, cool. What's <laughs> up, you me? guys? What were you guys' takeaways? What's up, man? Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, having the call. This is our second time on it. That was our first time speaking on it. This is Sarah Gov right here. Hi. What's up? Where are you guys? You guys are in Fresno, right? Fresno, yeah. you know, man. <laughs> Fresno in the business. <laughs> um, the, thing I, the thing we got away from it, well, what I got away from it personally, was the uh, love your, love your uh, customers, love your clients. Um, and I really take that, you know, into heart. I, I really preach that to the team is um, sometimes when we get a client and, and, and I mean, we've been do, do, doing this for three years um, and when they don't purchase or they don't uh, come through, you know, sometimes we kick them to the curb and I made the mistake before of doing that. And at the end of the day, hey, you're supposed to love everybody for who they are. And same with the team members. I mean, we have world teams. We have, uh, uh, you know, uh, senior consultants, qualified producers, supervisors, and sometimes they hit the cut and sometimes they don't. Um, but at the end of the day, hey, you praise them for what they could do. You love them for who they are. And I really preach, you know, to get to know the person, love the person for who they are, you know, because behind all that, at the end of the day, there's a human being behind a, a client. There's a human being behind a, a, a customer or a member. So, you know, really care about that person. Um, and I really do preach that to the team. And by doing that, I really see the team growing and, and working harder. Um, 
And you know, just, just Herbalife's a relationship built company. And it's really about building those relationships with everybody. Even if somebody, you know, doesn't, isn't a return customer, hey, just keep the good relationship with them. Uh, keep the positive vibes with them. Because, hey, later on in life, when they do decide to make that change, they remember you. They remember the way you, make, you made them feel. So they're going to come back to you. And, and, and that's an awesome feeling to have. Uh, but that's something that me, I got away from, uh, you know, from the Tony Robbins. Uh, there, anything you want to speak? <laughs> I think she just did it. Um, <laughs> Reach on over, friend. <laughs> um, what I got from Tony Robbins was actually the standards part. Roxy, I love how you emphasize on you gotta you gotta build your standard. No matter where you are in life, you gotta keep building and building and building because at the end of the day, it's not about you. It's about what you're trying to do for yourself, your family, your clients. How you're gonna change their lives. And for me personally, I've raised my standards. I've actually come up with a challenge for our team. It's kind of, it's called the mind and body challenge. I've already started it myself. Um, July 1st to extravaganza, consistency, determination, dedication, that's all it is. I've raised my standards. Um, I'm more than grateful for what you guys are doing for everybody that's on this call uh, because I've been doing this since September, but we barely hopped on. I was like, this is awesome. It's for everybody. I love it. So thank you. You got it. Awesome. Glad you guys could tune in. One thing for all our Herbalife members, why should they go to Extravaganza? Since I see your band on, shout out to the Extravaganza band. There you go. Why should they go to Extravaganza for all our Herbalife members and future Herbalife members? Uh, I think you guys are on mute. Hold up, hold up. Let's unmute you. Hold up. Uh, there we go. You're good. Good to go. Oh, I missed it. Say it again. What uh, For all our future Herbalife members and current Herbalife members, why should they go to Extravaganza? Why are you guys going to Extravaganza? Oh, man. Why, why not? I mean, it's, it's the Super Bowl of Herbalife. It's, it's what you have to go to for Herbalife. It's absolutely crazy. It's mind-blowing. I remember my first one being in Vegas. And I, I just went, yeah, I remember going, just going for the Vegas trip. I mean, that sounded fun, but I got so much out of it. And that totally just changed my whole perspective, set goals, set my business six months, advanced my business six months. Because um, I, and I, and honestly, I'll give you a personal experience. Last extravaganza, I missed it. And that was personal reasons that I missed it. And that set my business back six months. Um, so I couldn't, I can't miss another one. Just, just knowing where I was the year before and, and missing one, I just, I'm so anxious to get back to it. Um, I remember how fun it is. I remember how just how, how much growth you get from it. Um, this is going to be your first one. Huh? This is my first one. I'm excited right. for it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Excited. It's going to be a blast. Thank you guys so much for sharing. It's going down in a major way. All right, you guys, so now we're going to upload this to YouTube, share with your friends and family. Every Monday, you know we're here, and uh, every Wednesday, we have our Herbalife Nutrition Power Call. We're going to have Marquise Key, who actually put on weight with the Herbalife products, share his favorite products, tips on how he uses them, and his impacted life from becoming an Herbalife member over three years ago. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday. You don't want to miss that. And uh, next Monday, we're going to be watching part two of this video. So tune in, share the video, share the link, and uh, let's share the love, you guys. Much love. Have a great one. It's time to get it. Bye. Hey, peace.